welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Pokemon, the podcast where we talk everything and anything Pokemon. And you would think after about 29 episodes, I would come up with a better introductory line for this podcast, but I have yet to do so. Now you're doing great, man. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, listeners, this is, of course, going to be about the Pokemon Presents, because what kind of a Pokemon, any sort of like social media, whether it's Twitter, podcast, YouTube, whatever, would not cover Pokemon Presents? Like, nice. I... I find that hard to believe. Like, I listened to a Pokemon Go podcast, and even they, at least, uh, would talk about the, the new Pokemon being introduced. But, now, this is our time to strike out, yeah. go against the flow. <laughs> Not talk about Pokemon Presents, talk about everything else, like Halo Infinite and all its other problems. It's like every video game out there has some sort of huge issue going on. Right, because there's uh, Pokemon go, go and its, and its, and its uh, problems. There's Halo Infinite... I'm uh, not sure with the Halo Infinite. Uh, the biggest non-Pokemon story that I'm aware of is uh, the Blizzard shenanigans, which just makes me very sad. There's that, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a weird time for video games. It's it's bizarre. The, the pandemic really brought out the worst of things, I think. Yeah. yeah. All right, well... Uh, if you haven't realized yet, listeners, uh, my buddy Austin is back, the uh, a co- co-host in spirit, so to speak, since he's yeah. been on here from time to time. We originally were supposed to cover three regions now, since we're kind of behind because of, of adult life, of course. But I figured, well, again, I ha- we have to talk about the Pokemon Presents, because what kind of a Pokemon podcast it would be if we didn't talk about it. And it'd be nice to kind of bounce off ideas, which is why I was thinking like, oh, this would be awesome for him to like just just talk to him about this instead of doing our our three region podcast episode in which we just kind of ramble on about how much I hate black and white, um, <laughs> of which I maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I have to replay in it. Maybe I changed my mind. We'll, we'll find out soon enough. But I uh, tune in next time. <laughs> but bes- before we get into that because uh, we they haven't heard from you Austin in a long time how's how's life liberty and the pursuit of uh master's rank in Pokemon unite oh man um <laughs> so the unite um mad at you <laughs> we'll get into a little bit more when we talk about the uh, Pokemon presents right night stuff um I'm mad at you. I still love the game. <laughs> I'm still enjoying playing the game. But I'm mad at you. you know, I, I think I am uh, like the middle. What's it's was There's... it a great elite veteran? Or is oh, it great is veteran it? elite? No, expert. Wait, hold up. How far away is that from expert then? I don't Because I'm an expert right now. And uh... I thought it was expert veteran. Oh, shoot. It is. Is it that many tiers? Jesus Christ. Let's see. Let's. Because I know, I think you are veteran. Because last I checked my friends list, it popped up as you as veteran. Okay, so you got beginner, great, expert, veteran, ultra masters. I'm veteran. Jeez. I think I just got to veteran two okay. the other night. I was waffling between veteran um, one and getting demoted to expert five and back up. Because it, it it be like that sometimes. Yeah, I've I've learned to control my efforts and ranked after like because I I I went up really quick as it, I'm sure everybody else at the beginning of the game because everyone was trying to figure it out and then mm-hmm. I got into a point where I just I I kept pushing myself even though. I didn't know what I was doing and there was new characters that I just wasn't familiar to encounter with. And I was like, okay, I got to stop. So now I don't, I don't even push for rank anymore. I just do. So obviously I log in for the dailies mm-hmm. and I just do my, I do either three quick matches or two quick matches, one standard to get all my daily stuff for the, for the battle pass and for the, um, the login missions. And then if I, if I feel like I'm on a roll with those, like I'm, I feel like pretty good and confident, then I'll do one ranked. And if I, if I level up once, okay, I'm done for the day. I'm good. <laughs> like that's as far as I'll go. So I'm slowly ever going to get up there. Hopefully I doubt maybe I'll get to masters by the end of the season, but I, I'd rather go that route. Hi. Do we know when the season ends? Uh, 30 something days last I saw because I was checking the battle pass stuff. Um, 
because I, I haven't bought the, the the premium battle pass yet. I'm waiting until mm. I get oh, to like, it level was, 85 it was, or something like that. Was it 30? It was either 60 or 90 days, and we just crossed 30 days. Not too long ago, so yeah, it's probably. I think I'll be able to hit Masters before the end of the season, but it'll be like it'll be right there unless mm. unless we can get a five stack going. Yeah, uh, everything else going all right besides your frustration with Unite? Uh, yeah, uh, life's life's pretty good. Baby's getting big. Um. I just finished. I have one semester left of school. Nice. Just I turned in my last assignment, my final project today. That was good to finally be done. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I picked up Sword and Shield again. I do part of my daily Pokemon loop now with logging in for Masters, logging in for Go, doing Unite as I do like one or two. Um, Dynamax Adventures, going for the the Bacon Bird Shiny Evital. Okay, that has proved unsuccessful, but it, it's <laughs> it's part of my daily like loop of of video game. I don't want to okay. say chores, but video game chores, errands. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah, Pokemon has definitely found its way to like make it a necessity to do every single one of these things but like it wasn't i don't know for me it wasn't like the most obtrusive like here in your face like you have to do these things like i just naturally like them and i was like oh i want to do them because i want to get better i want to get the uh, more items i want to do this and that so pokemon your pokemon is a genius at this i feel like because i think other games would just be like no i don't want to deal with you because you're just yelling at me to give you money yeah they're they're subtly predatory not Overtly predatory. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the Pokemon Presents talk. So it was 28 minutes, which was, I think, the longest any Pokemon presentation has been besides the the news, the, the developers conference, which technically that wasn't really supposed to be for the public. But yeah. I mean, we had uh, we got to see it anyway. But yeah, 28 minutes. And they all they mentioned was. It was going to be about uh, Diamond and Pearl and Arceus and then, of course, the and more part. And I didn't realize that the and more was going to consist of so many different parts. Like they were quick, but it was it was nice that they touched on a little bit of different things of like what they are doing right now in the Pokemon world. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the 28 minutes of that. Did that surprise you at all? Or were you just like, yeah, well, let's see what, what they have. Surprised by the length or what they had? Uh, the length. Uh, well, I think we knew going in it was going to be the longest presents, but I didn't know what the longest before this one was, so I didn't know like, oh, is it like two minutes longer than the previous one, or is it the longest one before been 15 minutes and this is almost double as long? So I was, I was more of just like, the more you give me, the happier I am, mm -hmm. and this will go go until it's done and I'll be sad when it's done even if it went for an hour. <laughs> I think the longest one I recall that in my head would just was when I remember was watching it, I was like man this is like this is a lot of time they can give us a lot of info it was one of the sword and shield presentations where it was like 12 minutes. It was like when they first started giving us like showing us like Wulu and Gossifleur and uh Chudo and all them. Um, the only other one that it, that you could argue rivals this would be if you count the 24-hour live stream of Glimwood. That's what well, I was in a Pokemon presents. <laughs> so that was, but that people was, were watching it. Like people were staying staying tuned for the whole thing. That was a heck of a social experiment. Is what that was. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's go through everything they announced at the Pokemon presents. We'll kind of go in order of increasing importance. Uh, because the uh, like the stuff they introduced at the beginning was really quick. It was just here, this is what's going on, this is what's coming up, and then move on to the next one. Um, so we'll start with probably the least important Pokemon thing that exists out there, which sometimes Pokemon I forget Go. is even there. No, Pokemon Cafe Mix. How dare you? <laughs> Do you play? Yeah. 
I I I cannot get into this game. Like I've tried. I've tried really hard. And then when Sobble was in there, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this for Sobble. Can't even do it. I think I have Squirtle. Is Squirtle even in the game? I believe so. I I, I feel like maybe I got him, but I'm I just can't. Yeah. Like I do the game I do the puzzles. I'm I'm doing the, 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 the different recipes. I switch up the Pokemon, but it's like I have no I don't know, like eagerness to just go home or wake up in like 3 a.m. when it resets and just play this. Like I can't. I don't know what it is. And I was excited that they announced the revamp because the revamp thing was supposed to. Well, they announced it like almost a year ago. I want to say because I remember always having to bring that up on this podcast and and they just kept doing repeat runs after repeat runs after this and this. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna wait for the revamp. And they did show us the revamp and i'm glad that you're on this because i don't know what the difference is coming into pokemon cafe with this revamp versus what's already there so please enlighten me so i haven't played recently it's just to me this is bigger news than the like two seconds of hey here there's some galarian pokemon coming to pokemon go (laughs) um i guess that's what i was really saying of a matter of importance but okay. so what it looks like to me is it's kind of oh the gameplay is staying the same but it looks like it's going to be new puzzles overall it looks like it's going to be kind of like a more polished experience but it honestly more looks like when they quote unquote revamped masters which was to say like not much changed functionally. <laughs> I know they did stuff with like some of their currencies and how like different upgrade things worked and they got rid of some stuff and they added a few new features, but like the core of the game of Masters stayed the same after they revamped it and it looks like okay. that's going to be the same for this where they're probably like okay, this didn't work, so we're going to cut that and we might tweak this and then they're just kind of like re-releasing it in a sense to be like okay we think we've polished it into a better overall experience so now we're just kind of going to like here's a good jumping off point for this more polished refreshed experience is what it looks like to me because looking at the stuff that they showed it didn't look much different Except the clothes. I think the clothes are new. Yeah. You get I, little I, outfits. That's the only thing I heard was like, you get new costumes and there's new Pokemon. I'm like, how is that different from just doing a regular update like you normally do? Like, that's the thing. Like, I, I guess I guess I would just have to like the game for me to realize what all the new stuff is. I, I, I It's just not my kind of game, which is weird because, I don't know, I kind of like... Like shuffle is is like a simpler version of this, and I I liked I liked Pokemon Shuffle. I was logging into that game quite frequently. Yeah, but I just and this one, you know, it's it's a little bit more I guess exciting because of the different you know gadgets or or power ups or whatever that you get to use. But I just I don't know what it is. I just can't get into this game. And and I was hoping that the when I when they when they were about to announce the revamp on the presents, I was like, cool, let me see what what's gonna be new. And it looked nothing new. I was like, oh, okay, gonna not continue to play this game anymore then. <laughs> so I don't know. That's that I, I, I I'll give it one more shot and I'll try to play a little bit longer than I have been, but I just don't think it's gonna stick the landing for me. For a while the Zoom Zoom game was a good pastime for me at work, and that's this just replaced mm. that. It actually replaced because um, it came out originally came out the day we left the hospital after my daughter mm. was born. So it was kind of one of those like, all right, I gotta stay awake, but I'm tired. <laughs> I need to just kind of idly do something. So that I played it a lot. The first mm, five or six weeks after my my daughter was born, it filled a lot of time. Then, I'll see. There's 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 some sort of connection and reasoning for that, as opposed to me. I feel like all the other mobile games are better than this. 
but yeah. I'll try to give it its fair share. But okay, so let's go ahead and then talk about Pokemon Go, which to you was the least important thing because they did only like it was very short. But the, to be fair, it's because they already announced all that stuff. Yeah, like, we knew all this was ago. was coming. We'd seen the trailer already, which kind of. I don't want to go into this rabbit hole here, but I feel like all of that stuff was probably announced to avoid or maybe lessen whatever conflict that they knew they were about to get into. Oh, it was a hundred percent the 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 comment comedic smoke bomb you verbally <laughs> announce and throw on the ground and then run away like. Because I would say, like, the Ultra Unlock 3 stuff was a surprise. At least for me, I was genuinely, like, shocked. I was like, whoa, this is something I did not expect. Like, I was expecting maybe Hoopa or just, like, another Dialga with some sort of new attack or whatever. Or not Dialga, um, Giratina with some sort of new attack. Like, like they were just keeping it under wraps just to build suspense for no reason. But this one, I felt like this was, this was cool. This was awesome. Like, I... I I've grown fond of Zamazenta because I know last time we talked about Sword and Shield, I think I said that I wasn't a fan of Zamazenta. I just can't get over his design. But I think since he was introduced to Masters and I've been using him because he's a really good support sync pair, Mm -hmm. I've been I've been growing more fond of Zamazenta. And now I'm like, yeah, these legendaries are awesome. Um, I, I, I still I mean, I don't know how often you play Pokemon Go. I do the daily logins, of course, but I mean, I'm still, I'm trying to catch everything that I can. I'm at this point where now I'm trying to do, uh, you know, perfect IV Pokemon, and I'll just, I, I go, I play more than the casual on Go player, but I'm not to the hardcore level where I'm going to spend a crap ton of money on it just yet, because um, it's just, I, I, I don't know, it's just too much money to bank on storage and whatnot. Um, but I, I'm loving the the Galar stuff right now in Pokemon Go. It's just cool to see Wulu, Skolvit, Phalanx is obnoxiously large, but it's just cool to see him in there. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on the on the whole Galar Ultra Unlock three uh, stuff? Uh, I like I like it. I feel it's um, long overdue. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't see any reason why they had to like we're gonna do it by region the way it was released like just put things out that are appropriate timing wise so like if you're gonna show if like sword and shield came out the like swulu and squavit could have come out when sword and shield came out like true and so you know but to kind of put it around this hoopa thing that they had going on and to kind of now be like okay like going forward we're just gonna like give you pokemon whenever we give you uh great i like that i think it's cool yes how much i played um unfortunately um cell service around my house and my neighborhood is terrible so i can't oh. like play and i can't even like i'm lucky if i can spin one of the three stops or by my house when i go on my walk just because of uh cell service Gotcha. But I, I'll pop, turn it on and like pop on every like two or three times a day. Just catch the like three Pokemon around me. Mm-hmm. Um, try normally. There's a daily that I can do. You know, if five berries catch right. five nice throws, power up something I can do. Right. Um, easy enough. Do you have my house in yet? I don't. I don't either. So yeah, um, I, I'm in the same boat. I don't have a Zashi. It's weird though because, I mean, it could be maybe because of what has been transpiring recently with Pokemon Go. But every time I check for a Zashian raid, there's no one in the raid, and for me that's just odd because I every time there's a new like raid Pokemon out, like a new legendary and I, and I check a, a freshly opened egg for a five star raid. There's yeah. always at least like one or two people like waiting to start it. And I'll just jump in and I'll invite my five people and we'll get it going. But I just haven't had that luck lately and just no one starting up that raid. So I'm like, Oh God. Okay. I got to really, I got to probably go to like a theme park area just as, you know, at least get the busy traffic in there and hopefully someone will start it. I yeah. haven't even got invites, which is weird because I usually get invites from people from other countries. Um, but 
nothing. So I don't know. There's still time, right? There's I, I don't know how long he's supposed to be in raids for, like a like a week, week and uh, a half. Zashian is through the twenty sixth. Okay. And then um, Zamazenta to twenty sixth to September first. The Hoopa storyline though is like the smartest way to, I think to go about it. it. That gives them the perfect excuse to like introduce whatever Pokemon like. I mean, we'll probably bring this up later again, but when since we have new regionals coming up in Arceus, I that would be like the perfect reason to bring them in at this time. It's like, oh, yep. well, Hoopa opened up the mention hole in here, and now they're making their way into Pokemon Go. So, um, I think, I think, I, I guess they were trying to figure out the best way possible to do this lore wise, and there they go, they found their way. But I think this is, uh, I, I, I think it's really cool. I like it a lot, and Just... and then. It's, Give it's me Hoopa horrible. eventually. Because with right. Meloetta being in Go, I think now Hoopa is the only mythical that I'm missing. No, I don't have Jirachi <clears throat> or um, Fi- was it Fione? Manaphy? Manaphy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Fiome are the only, but uh, well, or soon we get those. The real question, so then, if you want Hoopa, is which Hoopa version do you want to catch first? Because you know they're going to do them separately. Uh, the cute one. I got it. The little <laughs> small, small uh, genie-looking one. Yeah. All right. Um, Pokemon Masters. Let's go ahead and talk yes. about this one. Uh, it's celebrating its two-year anniversary coming up, which uh, I believe is on the 29th, if I'm not mistaken. Um Right now, they're doing the run up to it, which you can do the uh, you can sync scout for Leon and Eternatus. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have the the storyline where you can get Zop and Hama, uh, Zop, Hop and Zamazenta. And then, uh, what they officially announced though, as part of the two year celebration, is that they are going to bring back N, but it's I believe Cygna suit N with Reshiram. Yeah, uh, which we already have N and Zekrom, so it kind of makes sense for him. I, I guess this was the smart way to do Reshiram for him, and I think that's like that's like something that you can suspect going forward. And just in general, it's like, oh, well, he's supposed to have this Pokemon, but of course, they can just bring him back with the Cygnus suit. Like yep. that gives him like a scapegoat uh, to do that. And uh, and and I I think that's it. But I feel like they, I don't know, if that's all it is, it's kind of underwhelming as like a general i guess two-year anniversary because i believe the first was it the first year that they did the kanto trio or did they do that for pokemon day um i think the first year anniversary they did red first year was just red i believe because blue was already in the game and green came later if i remember right yeah uh, Leaf, yeah, 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 yeah Leaf. Um, she came yeah. later. Okay, so then is, I guess, is Cygna suit N, like, that top tier that he's on par with Red? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know who else to put in, and I guess this would make sense because N is a is a popular character in general. But I don't know. I I'm not as real and excited i'm more excited about leon and eternatus because i've been spending way too much money on gems trying to get them and i've still yet to get them i feel like at this point i'm going to do the 400 (laughs) scout points and just get them after that but uh yeah i don't i i mean how much of masters do you play because i know last time we talked you didn't really do masters uh i still don't I guess mm-hmm. I log since the other thing they did was the hundred free pulls. Yes, ten per day. Ten per day for ten days. So I've been logging on and getting all my my free stuff every day since they mm-hmm. announced it. Um, but I haven't actually played at all since. I I would probably will like maybe like just ten fifteen minutes a day go through a bit now that I'm done with school for. Mm-hmm. a little bit and have a little more free time uh but i enjoyed playing it it was just it just fell off kind of thing and so um this is a good enough reason as any now that school's done and this all this stuff going on to get back into it i don't know if i'm gonna spend any money on it but 
I will. I will play. Yeah, I don't know what it was that made me start spending money to begin with. I think because they do this thing where every month they got like the special gem purchases, and dollar yeah. gets you three hundred gems, which is great because that can give you either one pool or you can do three uh, daily discount pulls, like mm-hmm. so one each day. And I think from there, I, I was. I don't know who it was. I don't know if I was just addicted to. It can't be blue because I had way more than enough gems to get blue and I got them multiple times. But it was one particular sync pair. I don't remember who it was that just made me. I was like, okay, I'm going to buy gems. I'm going to buy gems. And I realized, crap, I'm buying way too many gems. And I'm, I, I think I've, in the two years that Masters has been out now, I have spent more money on the gems there than I have spent money in Pokemon Go in the five years that it's been out. And, and that's not good. That's <laughs> not. Not, but uh, I I want to bring up the the ten sync pairs per day, the hunter sync pairs. I think for newcomers, those just jumping into the game now, it is an awesome opportunity to take advantage. Everyone yes. should be jumping in right now to do that. For us veterans, if you want to call us that, or longtime players, this is terrible. <laughs> this is crap in the sense that I I don't know if you saw the offering rate. For the five star sync pairs, but they are like 0.425%. So less than 1% for each individual five star sync pair, which makes it almost nearly impossible to get any of those. Because I think in, to- I forget what the total amount it might be like 5% or something like that, that you have a chance of getting a five star. But I mean, and so far I have not gotten a single thing above three stars. Uh... Which. I don't think I've gotten anything. I don't even think I've gotten a sing pair. <laughs> what? Uh, no, like, well, wait, have you, you've cashed them in, haven't you? The 10 free. Oh, I'm talking about the, I was thinking about the other, the, like the 10 items, free items you get every day. Uh, what 10 free items are you talking about? Wait, 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 what? Hold on. Now I'm double checking. There's a thing. It's like when you yeah, go to the this... ticket scouts. Yeah, uh, the you get a ticket scout. You take yeah, that, that to the the yeah, ticket and then scout, you get the, and then there's the other thing in the store that gives you like items. Um, unless it's like a like a new player or longtime returning player thing, because the dailies gives you eighty gems once you complete them all, and it just gives you skip tickets and then stamina, and that's pretty much it. There's nothing like additional beyond that. So it might you might you might be like switching it up with like um the other event items or something mm, like that. It's the daily scout. <clears throat> There's that. Oh yes. Okay. So the that's ten daily scouts. Yes. Yes. So that that does give you items and the occasional sync pair. I'm talking yes. about the 100 pair, the 100 sync pairs that you're you're able to cash in that ticket to do the 10 to 10 pool. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one I'm frustrated with because. It is almost impossible to get a five star, and like I've seen some posts, like you know, people ha- have the occasional five star here and there, but it's it's you. I mean, you count all your blessings, you pray as many times as you need to, and just hope that you get something out of it. So for me, it's just like, all right, how many times am I getting Ramos this time? Oh, there's another Janine. Oh, okay, or uh, what is it? What, who's the who's the Koga's daughter? What's her name again? I think, I think. Uh, she has the Ariados s- in the game. Starts with the J. J- Jasmine? Jasmine. Uh, no, I think I was right. Janine. Jasmine is the Steelix trainer. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Janine. Like, I don't know. I'm just kind of over the three star sync pairs just because I've been playing Salon. I've maxed out a lot of my sync pairs. And it's just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, first world problems i guess when it comes to pokemon masters well i just did my my daily ticket and i got lucimine and Feramosa, so i hate you <laughs> i hate you i don't even know why i brought you on here to begin with now <laughs> to prove to you that you can in fact live on air get a five star sync <laughs> bear from that i don't know how many gems i'm going to be pulling in for n when he comes out, I'm more focused on Leon and Eternatus, and if I get to it, I'll get N. But well, as someone who may or may not hate <clears throat> Gen Five, I pro- probably won't spend that much. <laughs> All right, let's talk now about Unite. 
Unite. So it, I don't think it was surprising that they would have Unite News. The other three, I think, were a little bit surprising that they even included in the Presents. But it does make sense. The Presents lets them talk about anything. Mm-hmm. Unite, though, because of how big it is like in terms of player base and popularity, it makes sense for them to reserve some time there. And one thing that was speculated and did come to fruition was the release date for the mobile version of the game, which is September 22nd. Yes. Um, they showed a very quick clip of the layout and, and the gameplay on the phone. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Like it seems like it's a like too good to be true to easy to navigate all that stuff, but I don't I've never played a game where I have to use my left thumbstick to move my character or yeah, my left thumb on the s- touchpad to move my character. Yeah. So, I mean, have you, have you played games like that before? And is it does it work? Uh, is that legit? <laughs> like, I've played a couple. Um, yeah, there, there's. I've seen some YouTube footage of mobile people. I don't know if the NDA from the beta got lifted or what. Um, but like the screen cap people did of their phone playing it looked good the ones i've played like the game's not super like graphically intensive so it, it they it runs say well enough like okay what the real hindrance is not going to be your hardware it's just going to be your internet connection sure i was just thinking in terms of like if I'm holding my phone like a controller, is this still comfortable and not obtrusive to me viewing everything on the screen? That, like, is my thumbnail going to be in the way of that that Pokemon that was down there in the bottom left corner that I should have watched out for, but I didn't know was there because my thumb was covering it? Yeah, I that that's just I think that's on an individual basis on how big's your phone screen, how big's your hand, True. how do you hold the phone. Yeah. So that's that's hard to tell as on a broad stroke. <laughs> yeah. Uh I'm glad it's coming out for mobile. I I think I'm I think I'm going to use mobile more than I realized just because m- more like, more for the daily login stuff where I have some downtime like in my lunch break at work or just if I want to relax on the bed instead of on the couch and you know not use my switch, just let it charge or whatever. Um yeah. Uh, and if you uh, they announced that if they have a certain threshold of pre-registration where they'll give you Pikachu, the Unite mm-hmm. license for Pikachu, if you don't already have it. Um, if you do, I think they just give you the the, the gem credit the for gem. it or something like yep. that. And then uh, if there's like, I forget what the thresholds were, but then there's another level beyond that where you'll get the Hollowware for Pikachu. Yeah. It's 2.5 million for the Pikachu Unite license and five million for the Hollowware. Now, how do we pre-register for this? Because I don't know if you tried. I mean, I tried to look it up on the App Store and it's not there. Is there somewhere else that we're supposed to pre-register for that? Because I thought they said it was available to do that now. I, it's in the App Store. I figured. What was it? Um, I think Masters. I pre-registered for. Um. Do do do. While I look, I'll get into, we can talk a little bit more about it, but um, my beef comes from Unite on this announcement on how dare they. How yeah, dare they I just not searched, put in Mammal Swine sooner than we thought? <laughs> how dare they show Mammal Swine and not say a word about my boy Blastoise? Yeah, I just searched Pokemon Unite in the store and I have a get option to pre-order. Oh, okay. I'll have to look that up later because I was checking, I think, like the day after the presents and it wasn't there. So maybe it's there now. And I just I haven't bothered to check again. But okay, so let's talk about the players. Let's let's first talk about what they did show. And it was that they're bringing in two new characters, uh, Mammal Swine and Sylveon, yes. which one is definitely a fan favorite. Sylveon, of course. Mammal Swine has like a small following, a small click of uh, of, uh, of groupies, I guess, or whatever you want to call them that love Mammal Swine. So uh, I I'm I'm assuming, and it only makes sense to have the entire 
evolution line, start with swine up, then pile of swine, then go up to mammoth swine. I think that would be the smartest thing to do because mm-hmm. I I'm more of a fan of swine up out of the entire three. But um, yeah, I I think it's cool that they're bringing them in. I think I would definitely use mammoth swine. I think that's one character I'm gonna buy, probably buy the unite license for and and try him out because um, I I love Alola Nine Tails and I can only assume he would do similar in the sense of like ice attack. So, uh, and I would think he's, he would have a higher attack boost than, than a little nine tails, but, um, I'm looking forward to, to mammoth swine. Sylveon, not so much. Um, I, I've never been an evolution fan overall. So I think it's cool that she's in there and, you know, it's available for those evolution fans. Um, I feel like it's kind of like a missed opportunity though. They could, should have done it in this month. Where the uh, TCG has the um, ev- uh, was it evolution uh, evolving skies yeah. set with all the evolutions, I think that would have been like the smartest tie-in to do because even Pokemon Go did EV Community Day for it. Um, but yeah, I mean, what do you? So your take on these two characters? Let, let's not address the, the 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 worst part of this. Let's just address the two characters. Um. So I'm curious if Sylveon will be. Eevee to Sylveon or just Sylveon? I assume just Sylveon. I assume too. I, I would because agree with that. I see a lot of um, clarity issues coming up because they oh, yeah. almost certainly will want to add other evolutions. Mm-hmm. And if you have a team with two evolutions and they started as Eevees, you in lane, you're like, am I in lane against the Sylveon or am I in lane right. against the Flareon? And that might you know, you're playing, you're like, okay, get ready for the Sylveon evolution, just getting its Flareon. That, so I assume that I probably Mammoth Swine will be all a three stage. And I think, I think he's going to be, or it will be a defender and it'll be the first three stage defender that we have. Hmm. Okay. Because right now we have Snorlax and Crustle as defenders. And so we don't have a three-stage defender. We have a three-stage for all the other positions. Or no, we don't have a three-stage support. Right? Uh, just... I'm not familiar exactly who's this, who's in what roles. Just like I haven't gone that deep into it. I mean, I played a lot. But yeah, I'm only, I'm only selecting Garchomp one and Machamp are all arounds. Talonflame is a speedster. Gengar is a speedster. The others are. Ta- yeah, I don't think we have a support, or and we definitely don't have a defender. That's three stage evolution. So I think he's going to be the first three stage defender. I say first because we're not <laughs> talking about it right now. But he'll be a three. I I think a three stage defender, or he might be. I don't know. You didn't see much of him. He might be a three stage melee attacker as a so like mm, okay. Because right now the, all the sp- melees are either all arounds or speedsters, speedsters and the attackers are all ranged. So he might be a, like a melee attacker. Okay, makes sense. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh. I guess my first question would be, have you bought other characters yet in Pokemon Unite? Yeah, I have. I think it'd be easier to say who I don't have at this point. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, okay, so then my next question... Well, okay, so we'll leave that to the yeah. imagination. But okay. my second question then would be, which one... Would you be like, are you going to get Mammoth Swine right away? Are you going to get Sylveon right away? Or you think you're going to hold off on one for a little while? Like, what are your like, if eagerness I, to play these characters? If I get one, it'll be Mammoth Swine. Mm-hmm. I want to see a little bit more of how it plays before I decide. Gotcha. Uh, I, I would assume that they would do. Because I don't know if they, I think they did this for when they, I think right now with Blissey, but like they give you sync, they sync pairs. They give you Unite players to play with for free in standard or quick matches or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, like, ha- did they do that for Blissey? Have they, are they doing that for Blissey right now? Mm, I don't think Blissey's free rotation yet, but I think it changes on Tuesdays. 
Uh, okay. So I think Tuesday, it probably was one week not free okay. to like get people to buy her. And now, and then it'll be like, okay, a week is gone. Bye. Try her out. If... Now we'll see. Like, here's, yeah. we'll see for free. Just Okay. So, okay. Because uh, I think that's what I'll do when Mammoth Swine gets released is try them out. I haven't bought a single Unite license yet. I haven't bought a single one. Like, I'm sitting on 22,000 AOS tickets or whatever like that. I don't and, know what they're all called. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm sitting on quite a bunch, but it's only because now we'll get to it. I've been waiting for so damn long <laughs> to get this blast toys that they had told us about early on in this entire like release. Like, hey, the sync peers or the unite players you're gonna get are so and so and black. Like, I don't even remember who the first one is because I just didn't even care. Gardevoir. Is there uh, here's all of these and then coming not long after release, Gardevoir and Blast Toys. Right. God and Gardevoir. then there was that mystery one. There was that question mark. Yeah. And we get the question mark before we even get Blast Toys, which makes absolutely no sense to me. And the specific language in the press release, as I'm looking at it, is why I'm so angry. Trainers can look forward to Mamoswine and Sylveon coming soon as the next playable Pokemon. So where we... is Blast Toys? <laughs> I don't understand. Like why? Like I mean, I, I would feel like you might have a more maybe a better look at it than I do because of the roles and I don't know, clarity of attacks or evolving Pokemon or whatever. But for me, in my point of view, it's like you have Venusaur and you have Charizard. Sure, we can go with the whole green and red were the first games, but let's be real. No one has ever done that Like since the beginning of Pokemon celebrations. It's always been red and blue. It's always been Charizard and Blastoise and Venusaur would be the one that gets left out like you're breaking all sorts of patterns here like this is a pattern i'm not comfortable with my i only have two leading theories on why blastoise hasn't been released yet one is they're gonna have it released with the mobile launch as a way to like uh... get people to do mobile like they're doing this pre-sign up but then like on september 22nd it'll be like play on mobile and introducing oh, blast toys so scammy okay the other is um i saw on youtube some footage again released from the beta where he was blast toys is in the game he was in the canadian i think it was the canadian beta yeah um and looked overpowered like absurdly yeah. overpowered yeah and okay. I, i'm thinking that they might still just not have figured out how to balance it yet to make blastoise feel unique enough hmm. but balanced because for the footage i saw blastoise would be the easily the most overpowered pokemon in the game if it was released the way it was in beta right now it well, had so I much crowd control so much push ability so, like it was absurdly good, and while I would love that, and I would love Blast Choice to be the most broken Pokemon in the game, um, they do seem very, um, in, like they seem to be like with how things are getting updated almost weekly with tuning updates. Very much want a very balanced game, and my only other thing is they just haven't figured out how to balance Blast Choice yet. Well, I'm going to hope for the first one. I'm yeah, going to hope too. that that's a scammy trick to get people to sign up for the mobile version. Because in my head, how I'm justifying that is, well, people love the Kanto Trio, and you can't have the Kanto Trio without obviously one of them. So you can only get it by signing up for also the mobile version of the game. Now you can have the Kanto Trio. That's, that's the route I'm going to take. I mean, they and... could even do like how they did Zero Aura for free during the launch of the Switch version, they could even do, like, get Blastoise for free if yep. you sign in the first, however, you know, first week or whatever that the the mobile is live. Yep. I, I am going to stick to that because that gives me more hope than the other one. Okay. Uh, Pokemon Unite, it's still popular. It's still banging. I mean, I'm still playing it every day for like probably like a good hour. And I don't think it's going to slow down or stop, especially with all these updates coming out for it every week to balance the game. Like you were saying, 
and with these new characters coming up that people are generally excited for. Like, yeah. I don't think there's been a single Unite character that people don't talk about or like don't or, or don't like don't frown about, right? Because even Talonflame gets its its fair share in the spotlight. But I think yeah, everyone, I've seen every Unite player on on the. I don't in the see game. anyone pick a Pokemon and I go, great, we have a a wiggly tough on our team. We're at a disadvantage. <laughs> like yeah. I anytime I see them, I'm like, well, if they know what they're doing and they know how to play it, right. we're good. Which is with all of them. There's there's some that lend itself to people who are you know, you don't have to have as good mechanics or game sense to play well. But I've there's again there's not a Pokemon like in other MOBAs where someone picks something and you're like, well, that's a troll pick, you know, where it's an uphill battle now. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Let's get to the talking about now the big the big two or three, depending on how you want to count this next one. Uh, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. After what probably feels way too long of a wait. We, to get new information and updates and footage and all that about this game, which I'm just going to slightly insert this little comment. Why couldn't they do this little mini presents for this game during the Sinnoh month? You know, if they were celebrating all the regions, wouldn't it have made sense for them to do it during that month? Maybe, maybe not. I guess I don't know how marketing works, but I mean, regardless, we got all the info for it. And it is, I for me personally, uh, you know, it, it, Diamond and Pearl holds a, a certain place in my heart because that kind of what got me back into the Pokemon video game, even though it wasn't that much of a long hiatus. Um, it was just cool uh, to see all the updates and everything, and I'm more excited for it now than I was before. Uh, and I, I guess for one particular reason, I just always was a fan of like the, the, the visual effects and the stickers on the Pokeballs. And the fact yeah. that that reminded me that that was coming back, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so ready for this. Where are all my water effects? Where are the bubbles? Like, where is the, my dive balls and all that? Like, I'm all for that. Uh, I know people are excited for the secret bases. I never got into secret underground bases in the original game, but... I, I guess I'll try this out because they added a new thing, right? This is this is new where if depending on how you go about decorating your underground base, you get access to an area and that determines what Pokemon uh show up. Yeah, I what they call them, not layers, something. Um but yeah, it, that's that is new. I didn't do much underground or secret bases either when I first played. Um but I also love love Sinnoh. I love Gen Four, um, and I'm I'm excited. But yeah, the the underground bases look like so you get decorations and then put the correct number or the correct kinds in your base. Yeah. You open these other areas that are like they look like a level like out of a cave from let's go yeah of pokemon and i think i remember them saying that certain pokemon would only be available in those so i'm that... not sure what that which ones those are or like how much they would be required to do that but it did sound like you know you can only there will be ones in the game but exclusive to these layers or whatever they're called in the underground I, I that's not surprising to me because i feel like pokemon has always done something to get you to at least try their feature yeah and this is just true. one of those ploys it's like well hey we have underground bases but now we've added this so if you want to interact with underground bases this is your reward for doing so and I don't think it'll be, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be like one Pokemon that's going to be super complicated to get because you have to put the right statues in the right areas of your underground. But I'm sure that's going to happen. But I feel like most of them are probably going to be pretty straightforward to get. 
put yeah. all the fire statue Pokemon in your underground base, and you might get access to the fire area and unlock mighty or yeah, uh, no Hound Doom or whatever. Yeah, that's what um, it looks like. Yeah, I I'm I don't think it's going to be that uh, too much like that much in the way or that much of a chore to do. Uh, we got the return, of course, the Pokemon concerts contest. Contests. Yeah, um, which look more exciting visually. Rather than just staring at 2D images uh, going across, well, for the most part, it was kind of 2D ish. Um, this was just seemed like a more like like that alone could be its own like little mini game if they wanted to do it that way. Well, it looks like uh, yeah, like a rhythm game. Yeah, because didn't they didn't they have something something like that in the original? Right, you had to like tap or press a button at certain points to make it dance or sing or something like that. I could have sworn that was that was a thing. I remember them doing like you know you had like the cool contest the yeah whatever but I remember it just being moves and then you put or maybe I'm mixing up with the Gen three contests but I thought you like you put different stuff on them and then like certain Pokemon's like natures made them more right. I don't remember a dance. Thing, but I could be just misremembering because I didn't mm. do them too much. Um, what else did we get in here? We got to see Pokemon walking around uh, behind yeah. your character. Union it, Room is back. Union Room is back. It. I'm very... I don't know how I feel about like them bringing back everything about the game. Like, Of course, they, you know, they said Faithful Remake and that would make sense for them to bring everything, but between Sword and Shield... And Pokemon Unite, and Pokemon Go, and Pokemon uh, Cafe Mix, maybe, for all I know. Uh, I just don't see a lot of people utilizing, like, the Union Room or Underground bases like they would have when the game first came out. Like, because I feel like the player base is so spread thin right now, and with Arceus on the horizon, I don't know if Diamond and Pearl will... I don't know, have as many players as it originally wanted it to be, I guess, if that makes sense. Like, do you know what I'm getting at with this? Yeah, I, so I think the union room is good because it can be online or local, which right now, given everything, local is not the best, but I see when hopefully we're finally through this pandemic, mm -hmm. whenever that happens, it would be really cool at like, cons or like worlds to be able to like oh let's all like get together and instead of just being like who wants to trade and then doing like okay let me get you and then oh let me get you and then let us get our connecting like you all can just get into a union room and then you basically have a digital version of like all right let's oh let me do a trade with you oh let's battle and i just I think it's I think it's a feature they should bring into more games with the local connections that switches are capable of instead of relying completely on internet connection. Yeah, like dude, it looks like <laughs> this does both internet and local connection. So like I think I I wouldn't be surprised if this is maybe like a soft test to see about adding this feature to be a more permanent stay in future games. Because in Sword and Shield, you can only do the wild area with an internet connection, correct? Like to see other people, like to see other players and interact with them, it needs a wire, it needs a internet connection, correct? I believe so, yes. I guess that makes sense. Because I was originally, when, when you were bringing up that point, I was just thinking, well, why need this? why well, I need that to happen when you got Pokemon home and the competitive scene is going to stay on Pokemon sword and shield and people are just going to bring Pokemon sword and shield and just trade through that way. You know, why would they need this? But, it, but if you phrase it as it's a test run to see how many people utilize it. And plus not all the Sinnoh Pokemon are in sword and shield, I guess they could track like how many players are trading all these, you know, Pokemon, like how many, but I, I just don't see then the purpose for those Pokemon, right? If they're not going to be in the competitive VGC, it's just for the collectors really. Yeah. Well, I, you know, not everyone has 
an expansive home right collection or some people just don't even have home but you know oh well i have four friends and you know i happen to have been the only one who got pearl and they all got diamond Mm -hmm. like let me let's all like get in the union room together and we can do trades and i need to get some trade evolutions and things like that and that's all would just be easier to do with like four of your friends yeah hanging out in a union room in your living room than trying to be like okay you do this and then you do that and then okay and then let us reconnect and then oh we've finished the trade now we got to connect again to do the trade back and they're they're just more they're more efficient overall i feel to do player interaction than the way games normally do i can see that yeah um also in this uh segment they announced a switch light version of diamond and pearl which is essentially a copy and paste from the ds version just now transposed on the switch light uh comes out november 5th uh which i i just now because i have a career and i can afford the little trinkets here and there i'm just i'm gonna try to get this hopefully it doesn't get scalped um but i'm gonna try to nab this switch light and then just leave it in the box never to be open because i already have a switch light i have the the sword of shield one i i guess so i'm just i don't know i'm not much of the outlines like i want full-on like themed consoles like i don't want details like i don't I, I just don't want the outlines i feel like i could just draw the outline on there for, i like, like for myself. i like black with with metal metal accent as a as mm. a color scheme in general so that i uh, yeah i don't i don't know like i like the the subtleness of it personally but that's i mean that's all personal preference i'm gonna say you're wrong for not (laughs) wanting more like you like what you like like my my biggest disappointment in a themed console is probably the the mario switch where it was just literally just like painted red and the joy cons were the only different color things i think and i was like for a 30th 35th 30th anniversary mario event you couldn't at least put the occasional like bullet bill or a Goomba or something on there to make it more Mario themed other than we're going to paint it red and hope you uh, associate red always with Mario. Like Look, they can't all be the Pikachu Game Boy color. Okay. <laughs> um, I, cause like, I mean, if we're going to compare consoles, the uh, the halo themed consoles have always knocked it out of the park for me. That's why I always buy them. But I, it's cool. I mean, it's. I'm still gonna get it. I think it works nostalgically. You know, if, if back then that's how the DS looked like, and I I saw a lot of people on social media like clamoring, like all over about this, but like, oh my gosh, it's like they just did the same thing. And this is brilliant. Like this just reminds me back in the day. Like I think it works for that for that, and that might be their yeah. target audience. Um, but again, my only concern is the scalping issue, which is still a thing for all consoles everywhere, and this is gonna be a big bigger one of the bigger targets for sure because it's a limited pokemon themed one and yeah it's just gonna go crazy but um i'm still gonna try to get it and uh what else what else can we bring up with diamond pro with with this segment i mean it's it looks nice um custom clothes custom clothes yeah that's right because you couldn't you couldn't have done that before um which I think makes sense because it puts you more into that role as opposed to just playing a standard character. A uh, lot of people hate those hats from Gen 4. I, I am one of those people, yes. Uh, so I'm glad that that customization is there. Um, i trying to think what else. I think we kind of hit all the, the highlights already because everything else is just regular gameplay footage of the game. It's the storyline itself. So yep. uh, I guess the Question. Oh, there's the 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 the, the man fee and fee. Oh yeah, that's right. First the... couple of weeks, it'll be like a mystery gift for it. Right? Is it both? I thought it was just the mana fee. Well, I mean, you get mana fee and then you can oh, breed mana fee for free right. on. 
Right, right, right. Um, the only Good thing I wanted, egg. before we leave the diamond and pearl conversation, the only thing I wanted to add on to this was I'm very uh, surprised by the lack of pre order bonuses overall for this game because at least with Pokemon Snap, you at least got a poster at your local GameStop. Uh, Sword and Shield had, I think, um, a poster as well as uh, like Pokeballs, like extra Pokeballs, maybe or something like that. Well, you get the extra this, Pokeballs. This, do you with this one? If you get both, Diamond and Pearl. Uh, three if you do it for the double pack. Okay, so at least that's there. If you it's do that, the like, digital double pack, you get. 12 quick balls and 200 pokeballs. The, just the like the hard retail double pack you get the 200 pokeballs. Oh, that's a lot more than they, they usually do. But I don't know, it's just like I like on the Pokemon Center website, if you pre-order Arceus, you get a free Arceus sitting cutie, which is cool. Mm -hmm. If you pre-order the double pack for that get all three Sinnoh starter keychains, which is cool. And even if you if you pre-order just one of the versions, you still get a Sinnoh starter keychain, just a random one. They, you can't, unfortunately, select one, but of course, for shipping purposes and accommodations, like it just makes sense for them just to say, hey, we're going to just give you a random one. Yeah. But like GameStop isn't doing a pre-order bonus, not that I've seen so far yet. Uh, Best Buy is not doing one. There's nothing at Target. Because like even at Target for Pokemon Snap, you had the you could get the photo frame. I'm just, I don't know. For me, it just was kind of like, huh, that's weird. Like, no one's doing pre order bonuses, which. I think this might be, uh, sis, this might be uh, a symptom of the pandemic. Uh, I think whatever they probably would have done may have not been able to get produced during the shutdowns. And that, so they're doing kind of what they can, just leaving it all. Mm. Okay, and leaving it more to just in the Pokemon company itself, which I gotta decide: am I going to pre-order to an individual Diamond and Pearl, or am I going to do the double pack? Uh, I, I would decided. say do the double pack if it's still available in Center, because I think it's sold out on Amazon and well, GameStop, if I'm not mistaken. My but... my thing is. I don't. I don't know. Was the Sword and Shield double pack? Was it two separate cases, or is it one case with both? Two separate cases. Okay, because that's what I want. I want two separate cases. Yeah, yeah. You get two separate cases. It just comes in the box. All right, let's move on now to the final showdown in this Pokemon Presents, which is now they finally revealed. A lot more about Arcus, and I actually thought they would because it just kind of was weird that they would give this much info considering they still have to sell Diamond and Pearl and not want to risk losing player bases to either one. But they gave us a lot of information for uh, for Arceus, or at least I felt like because I can my, my, my expectations were low, but yeah, um, let's address first of all. The regional forms, or yeah, I guess they would be regional forms, which is weird though, because this is the Hisu region, which eventually will become the Hisui uh, region, which will eventually become the Sinnoh region. Yeah, like I don't know how that works in lore, but I, I mean, uh, boundaries and things get renamed all the time historically. Yeah. Like, they're like, what? Well, how much of the Western United States was like Texas? <laughs> True. Before it got True. broken up into smaller states, I like different areas of China has increased and decreased. There's the Ottoman Empire. Like, I just, it's ancient history. So it probably was this big area. And then I imagine it got shrunk down into what we now call Sinnoh. Mm. Okay. Let's, uh, th so let's address the Pokemon first. They, they showed us four new Pokemon. Uh, we'll go in order of most important to least. Um, Basque Legion is probably the coolest one out of the four, in my personal opinion. 
because uh, he looks so dragon, like ancient, mythical, dragon-like. At least the face part of it. The other half, it's the same old Basculin tail. I, I almost feel like it's. It, you're not missing much there. But the fact that we get a Basculin evolved form after yeah. waiting this long for it. And it makes me wonder, like, are we going to get two different versions of this, right? Because you got the different hemispheres for the different Baskins or different seas or whatever whatever their their exclusives are, right? Because there's the red striped one and there's the blue striped one. I'm mm-hmm. curious if they'll do something with that, like that with Basque Legion. They may not have. I don't know. But uh, I think Basque Legion looks really cool. And uh, I'm I excited think. to get one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I liked them all. I like that. I like when Pokemon that people are like aware of, but don't like give a lot of credit or pay attention right. to. Um, like they get uh, their what sort like they get attention. So I'm just happy to see Stantler get something. I'm not a big like <laughs> a Stantler fan, but I'm happy right. to just for Stantler to get something. <laughs> like I, I like like. You know, like, I don't really care for Dunsparce as a Pokemon, but, like, I would love for Dunsparce to get an evolution. Or a Gigantamax. Or a Gigantamax or, or something. Um, what What's what's next on the list that we could go? Uh, the Growlithe, I think, was pretty cool. And I'm curious I if like... the Arcanine is going to stay or if it's going to be a different form. Because I still think the Arcanine could still work off of this form. Yeah, I... It's it's I'm curious what other forms we're going to get versus um new Pokemon. Because Basque Legion and why Weird Deer. Weird Deer, yeah. Wire Deer are two new evolutions. And then Braviary and Growlithe have two forms, and I think it's was shown that Rufflet though doesn't have a form; it just evolves, right? Um, into into the Braviary. So, like, I, I mean, I would assume. I don't think there's ever been a a first stage that evolved into not a form, <laughs> not a new form. Yeah, yeah. There, there's I been there's been like like the braviary like there's uh you know um like the evolve form is different yeah. yeah something evolves into a a new a new regional form but no like the regional form evolves into the normal form so i would think it still works the question is would you still need a firestone or not hmm. yeah uh out of the all the new pokemon introduced because we already addressed weird air which is next on my list but the braviary one is my least favorite like it's just got a glowing head and i feel like that's all that's different about this one which i mean cool that it's a psychic type psychic flying yeah i mean i i if i'm going off aesthetics i kind of like zatu more than i like braviary uh i don't know like it's just it doesn't cut it for me braviary is just like yeah i'm okay without it i don't need to catch one right away yeah but um you can use it as a glider. You can't do that with Zatu. As we don't know that yet. Where's the confirmation? Was it in the trailer? I think not. Uh uh-uh. uh. I don't, I don't think that's the only way to get around to. Uh I I would Yeah, you I can also know. ride a weird air or a basculation. <laughs> I'm curious. I think that's all the new Pokemon I feel like that's gonna be introduced. Cause like we're sitting at nine hundred now. And it'd just be it only like maybe makes sense to do Gen nine and add in the next hundred to reach that one thousand mark. But I I mean that's that's obviously just pure speculation at that point. Like there's no there's no thing there's nothing to hint at or prove that. But I I feel like that's that might be it. Which is why I think Growlithe might still evolve into Arcanine. But I think I the think, Pokemon look cool. I think I agree they look cool. I think we'll get one more new Pokemon mm-hmm. and at least I think it I would guess like at least two more regional forms and um, and if they're not and by two I don't mean like 
Arcanine and Growlithe count as like one in my mind. So okay. like it might be like a Hisuian Sudowodo and it doesn't evolve, which would be fine. But I would also be surprised if there was another like Hisuian evolutionary line, like Hisuian like first, second, and third form. Yeah. Um, we also got to see some of the more catching elements in here. You have to aim the Pokeball, you throw it at the Pokemon, but you could also move your character around while you're battling and catching, which I thought was an interesting take on this. Um, and there are certain Pokemon you have to sneak up on, and there are certain Pokemon that uh, are going to chase you and be more aggressive. Yeah, um, it looks... It looks like uh, the like pseudo. I don't I forget what it's called, but like the pseudo turn base, where like if you sit there and don't do anything, it will keep do it. Like if you're battling a wild Pokemon, you're like go yeah. Pikachu, and you don't tell Pikachu to do anything. The like Diglett's gonna keep hitting you. There's no trainer battles. Right, there's no trainer battles, it's just Pokemon battles. And there's certain like boss level Pokemon which Did they, they say no trainer battles? I could have sworn they said no trainer battles. Like there's no something in this game. And I think it is no trainer battles. Cause you can trade Pokemon, but you can't battle other people. And I think that's where they mention like there's no trainer battles in the game. I don't know. I guess we'll leave that as an iffy for right now. But I could have sworn that was it because then I remember all the social media talking about, oh, you can't battle against one another, but you can trade Pokemon with one another. I, I don't doubt you. I just I did not see that. So. And then they did show boss Pokemon like the Luxray yeah. and the Tyranitar and the Crobat. But then each one represents a style, if I'm remembering that correctly, because they showed off Crobat and Agile style. And I forget what the other one is, but I feel like this is like supposed to be that tie in with the TCG with the different battle styles they have going on right now, like Rapid Strike and Single Strike and Fusion style now coming out in the next set um, in November. Like the synergy there, sure. I don't know how I feel about it though. Like it's weird to add a different element onto the battling when So I'm looking at the now. What it looks like is they say you agile style using a move in agile style raises the user's action speed, which may make the user's next turn come sooner, but lowers the move's power. And then a strong style Using a move in a strong style raises the Pokemon's power, but your Pokemon's action speed will be lowered. So it looks, and it's showing the styles, it's showing Lucario doing both close, doing close combat Yeah, in both styles. So it looks like, yeah, kind of like it's one of those strategy, do you hit? faster but weaker or do you go for like a haymaker right which i can see that being useful for maybe the boss pokemon like maybe for the tyranitar you want to hit harder and not so much faster and luxray maybe you want to be faster because luxray is already a fast pokemon to begin with so uh, yeah. i mean I, I can see that it's just kind of like a weird addition like this game is is not your traditional pokemon uh, game interesting I like, that is very evident of that. So I think there's just going to be a lot of new things to get used to, a lot of new things to, to adjust and, and adapt. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's a different... I don't know. I feel like the feel of this game is going to be different because now we're playing a storyline where we're kind of a member of Team Galactic. And, you know, yeah, it do seems we, like a predecessor to Team do Galactic. Do we become a good guy at the end of this? Like, do we see what Team Galactic is, is like doing and we just stray away from it? Or do we just stay as... It'd be interesting if our character ends up being like a character that we see in Diamond and Pearl. Like uh, on, on Team Galactic. Maybe. My impression is that they used to take place way too far apart 
his timeline wise. Oh, you're right. True. I didn't. I didn't even register the timeline in my head. But yeah, you're right. That's why we're using little firework steam wooden pokeballs, <laughs> which is a cool addition. I like the aesthetic behind that. I um, I'm a big fan. Um, I'm looking the- at these though for the styles. So we were talking about like the battling and these images. There's on the right side of the screen an attack order. So it looks like you kind of like queue up moves and then it goes by the style to determine kind of like who's going to go. So it'll show it's showing like Lucario by fighting a Gastrodon and it's attack order is Lucario, Lucario, Gastrodon, Lucario, Gastrodon, Lucario. So it looks like using like agile style, Lucario gets two hits in before Gastrodon does anything. I, I'm sure they'll show more gameplay of it coming up because I think it was just to say, hey, these are new things. You want new information? Here's a new information. We're not going to explain it just yet, but here's some new thing for you guys to speculate and make YouTube content for. Yeah, I think it'll be like uh, like how the previous presents or direct or whatever did what this presents did for legends the previous pokemon thing did for diamond and okay. pearl yeah so we'll probably get something in like october maybe or i don't know because you don't want to you want to probably get more information out but you don't want to like take any wind out of the diamond and pearl sales i think it would be sometime in december right get smack dab in the middle between the two because diamond pearl comes out in november Wait, when does Simon Pro come out? November, right? November 19th. November 19th. And then uh, January 22nd for Arceus? Um, so I would assume sometime mid-December. 28th. Yeah, sometime mid-December. I I mean, the, the speculation would be that there would be another Presents or, or, or something showing off more, uh, more Arceus gameplay. But we yeah. shall see. Um... Anything else to bring up about Arceus? I feel like we talked less about that game than all the other stuff, but I I don't know. Like it's not like we have anything to complain about yet because we haven't really played the game and we've only pointed out the new stuff and it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it is compared to what we had before. I'm excited about the game more so than I think I was beforehand because I think at first I was like, Oh, this looks kinda cool. I'm sure it'd be interesting to play. And now I'm just like, Yeah, I wanna explore. And I think that's I'm sure that's the whole point of this game is to hit the exploration and collecting side of the Pokemon instead of like the battling side of things. Well, let's see. There's the crafting. Yeah. That looks that's cool. Looks like you can craft different and unique Pokeballs and items. Um, I like that the implication of the like survey outposts serve as like the Pokemon centers. Okay. Like it, it's because you get knocked out. You go back to the survey center. Um. Actually, here's a little belief. You may become unable to go on with your survey if you take too much damage, whether it's caused by wild Pokemon attacks or falling from high places. So you can fall off cliffs. Yeah, and it's weird. It's so bizarre that now the Pokemon can hurt you like you have a health bar or something yeah. it makes you it get sound into like... danger don't be reckless use your base camps to full effect as you carry out your survey work i like the implication that you can have all your pokemon knocked out but you still move you still within move the on, world yeah. and like i understand why that's not a thing in the base games because then it's like oh i got encounter wild pokemon and the game mechanically like uses your pokemon speed to check for running away and like there's no mechanic for it but this has a built-in mechanic so i just like the idea that like all six of my pokemon fainted now i have to like get back to camp without getting murdered by pokemon <laughs> which, which I kind of maybe like maybe that, that idea, maybe though. if you lose all your pokemon you still white out or whatever but i like the idea the potential of that being a thing where you can so 
So is this game kind of like then a tr- more true? Yeah, this has to be. So in Sword and Shield, right, the fact that we got the wild area was like people's first speculation, like, oh, this is one step closer to being an MMO. But it was like still limited, right? You would still do the very base Pokemon stuff. You get a wild encounter, you have your Pokemon, you faint, you go back to Pokemon Center. And now after hearing your explanation, it makes it sound like they're testing out more features that would be more prone to be put in a MMO like the walking around you lose all your Pokemon but you still have to walk back to the Pokemon Center yourself and you would have to avoid you know the wild Pokemon everything like that I I feel like that's just like this game just allows them to play around with those aspects to get into that bigger MMO dream or esque type of game that people would normally well people there's like a group of people that want that kind of experience I mean if you were to show me the gameplay of this game and the even how the battles look how the how you sneak around how you choose to throw out your pokemon i would a hundred percent believe if you said look at this gameplay this is a pokemon mmo i would believe it yeah just like if you if you showed all the way the game functions in place that we've seen so far and told me this is the beginning of a po- like the early stages of a Pokemon MMO. I'd be like, yeah, that's how I imagined a Pokemon MMO functioning. Maybe Gen Nine or Gen Ten is going to be that start of that MMO. Maybe. Maybe I, I like, I'm so conflicted on that because I want it, but I want it to have the same feel that will never get recaptured of early. 2000 like or er, like late o o x 2000 so like 2004 like the mid to late so like 2004 to like 2009 okay. era mmo experience which will never happen again which is unfortunate because i feel like that <laughs> would lend itself that's how i want pokemon to feel where like i go to a town and i see a bunch of people in there but if i like go off into the wilderness to like fight some crabs like that you would do in (laughs) world of warcraft like you didn't really see a lot of people like the world wasn't that populated and you can Hmm. they have the technology now with the phases where it's like you can be in the same zone in the game but there's like six instances of it so it doesn't ever feel too pop like they have the technology but there's just a sense of those games where like I play old original EverQuest or Mm -hmm. vanilla wow in its early release. And there'd be times where I would go hours and I, and I don't mean like two or three, I mean like five or six hours and see maybe two other players. Oh, wow. And like, but the world never felt empty because as soon as I'd go to a town, there'd be 15, like a small town, 15, 20, 50 players go to the big town hundreds right but then you go off to do your questing you might not see anyone for three or four hours and like that's how i want a, a pokemon mmo to feel and again they'd have to do instanced version of zones to keep populations low to ever feel okay. that way i just i don't want to be like look there's a Growlithe, and then like me and six other people all run at this Growlithe. I want her to be like, oh, there's a Growlithe. Oh, there's some one other person trying to get this Growlithe, which is kind of how it used to be back in the day. And that, yeah, and, and that's that's the MMO nostalgia player in me. But yeah. so that's I get it. I'm on the fence on wanting a true MMO or something more like this, where you kind of you get the experience of it, but like you don't have to deal with griefers or 50 people camping this one spawn location because everyone wants to get the Pikachu or everyone right. wants everyone wants to get Lucario's and this is the only place Riolu spawns so there's 50 people camping out this one Riolu spawn like I I don't want that I get it okay yeah um, yeah I don't know it'd be interesting to see I feel like that's still a long ways down the road though because I mean Game Freak doesn't do drastically big jumps in between the features of their games it always just seems like they're testing out something 
new yeah. in every generation and sometimes they keep it sometimes they just completely remove it altogether so uh i mean i wouldn't be surprised if we just go back to the same old same old in gen 9 or gen 10 um but i it just it's kind of adds more excitement to that possibility of that dream mmo that people would want yeah, yeah. i agree like and like i said i don't not want it but i would there's a very specific experience I'd want it to be. Now, if they made it and it wasn't that, I would still 100% play it and probably, um, I don't want to say ruin relationships because I'm married <laughs> now, so I, I can't ruin relationships. But I, I would, other parts of my life would get neglected if it existed because I, I fall I fall f- hard and fast into MMO holes when I when I find one that I like. All right. Well, only time will tell. All right. Um, I think that's it, right? That that was it for the Pokemon Presents because it like every yeah. Pokemon Presents it abruptly ends with like the last thing being said, and then that's it. There's no no tie-in, no tease for anything else. I think that'll be the only big Pokemon presentation we'll get until, like I said, December, I would assume, for Arceus. And yeah. overall, I, I feel like this was a really what Arceus is doing. good... This was a really good presentation. Like, there was not a single bit of disappointment besides the Blastoise fiasco. But everything else was just like... Hashtag like they were free Blastoise. <laughs> they were just uh, hitting home runs left and right with this. Um, yeah. This was solid. This was great. Like so much more information. Than I think anyone expected more things were announced than people expected. And I I would like for them to be consistent that way, but I know we're just going to probably go back to like regular eight, 10 minute presentations about here's just one game we're going to talk about, but uh, it was, this was cool. This was exciting. And I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to the, to the new Pokemon games coming out. Yeah. Got my pre-order for diamond and pearl. <laughs> Got that <laughs> happened. Done. Live, it did. This live. All right. Uh, yeah, Oof. I'm excited. I, you know, it's a good. As I feel like, right around before this game, the original Diamond Pro came out, it was a little rough to be a Pokemon fan, and you know, it feels right that ever since Gen Four, and we're getting the Gen Four remakes, tends to be kind of like peak time to be a Pokemon fan mm-hmm. and I feel like Gen 4 kicked off was the the pebble that started the tidal wave that we are riding on now and so I'm excited alright before we end this episode I'm going to end it the same way I do all my standard episodes because this is one of them and if you're not familiar with this at the end of the episode I read a Pokedex entry Ooh. from any of the Pokemon games and you have to guess what the Pokemon is just based off its entry. Now, okay. I'll give you about a minute or so to think about your answer, but I'll also kind of intermittently put in hints here and there to kind of help you narrow down your search because there's only 898 Pokemon. So, you know, you, you kind of need a few hints to kind of help you guide yourself to the right answer. But, but of uh, course. Like I said, I won't, I won't say what game the entry comes from either. That's the one thing I won't give away. Um, so if you're ready... I have my entry ready. Okay. To read. It says, as it grows inside its shell, it uses its psychic abilities to monitor the outside world and prepare for evolution. So it is a dual type Pokemon. It's got the hidden ability telepathy. It's a stage one Pokemon, so a middle evolution. Okay. Um, trying to think what else I can tell you without giving away the answer. Um, this might help narrow it down to the obvious, but one of its uh, common abilities is compound eyes. I'm um, trying to think. Yeah, I don't. I there's nothing else where they can give you about throwing it away. So I'll give you a, a, a little bit more time to think about it. Uh, in a shell? Mm-hmm. I'll read it one more time. So as, it's... as it grows inside its shell, it uses its psychic abilities to monitor the outside world and prepare for evolution. 
Uh... Oh. Mm. Okay. Uh, do you want me to say it, or is this like a tune in next week for the answer? No, no, no. no. It's, you, you say it. You can say it once you have it. Oh, uh, is it Dottler? It is number eight twenty five Dottler. Sweet. Yep, it's a newly released Pokemon. That's why, like, I couldn't. I don't know what else to say. Like, it's a new Pokemon, so narrow down Sword and Shield, and yeah, essentially you you'll get that. Um, because Compound Eyes narrowed it down to Bug, I would assume, because I don't think any other Pokemon type would have Compound Eyes. The only one that comes to mind is Butterfree. Yeah, and, and that's still a Bug I was, type. I was stopped and I was like, Butterfree? No. That, well, I was like, Metapot technically in a shell, but Butterfree doesn't get telepathy yeah and so it basically then was like okay well what other pokemon would get telepathy and i just i never considered dotler to be a shell which is why i was confused yeah i don't know what to make of dotler like i love or beetle and i i'm a fan of blip bug because blip bug looks like that lonely nerd in the corner that no one wants to hang out with but he's doing all right for himself and then you got dotler which yeah. for whatever reason the only thing that comes to my mind is uh like the rival to charge a bug he he looks like a doppler radar <laughs> yeah but it's just he, he looks more like a uh like a like toadstool like toad but without the body <laughs> I mean, when I saw him and it was like, it's Dotler, I'm like, that's exactly what that Pokemon's name is. It is 100% a Doppler radar with dots on it. There's only one piece of trivia for this Pokemon. No other Pokemon have the same type combination as Dotler and its evolved form. So, Bug, Bug and Psychic. Psychic. Yeah. My, my initial thought was like, what about Butterfree? But then I'm like, oh wait, no, it's Bug Flying. It only mm-hmm. learns confusion when learns it evolves. Learns confusion That's and it. learns Psychic. Yeah. Um, I like Dollar though. I don't know what it's shiny looks like. I, I didn't bother to look it up, but... Uh, um, let's see. I think Dollar gets an AMI Does Bubble Pedia have its shinies? Uh, maybe. Ooh, it's silver. I like, ooh, it, it looks good. Where am I supposed to look under this thing? For? I'm on the mobile version. I'd say like the bottom sprites. Uh, and it's like uh, it's like a little bit darker orange face and then it's shell. Uh, but I know it's a shell is silver. Oh uh, okay. Like a, a oh, so, or like yeah, a blue cool. gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a cool shiny. All right. Cool. All right. Um that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh Austin, thank you again for yeah, jumping man. on board with this episode. We'll be back uh for that, that triple region. Uh, episode we got to record, but in the meantime, if people want to follow you, do you got any I mean, you want to throw out their way? Um, well, if you're if you heard me before on here, um, I've changed my Twitter handle. I'm doing a slight rebrand. Ooh. I'm no longer Squirtle Squad 47 <laughs> on Twitter. I am VG Squirtle on Twitter. VG Squirtle? Yeah. What brought that up? Um. So my my Twitter icon is Squirtle with a headset holding uh-huh. two Xbox controllers. Uh, so VG easy enough connection to video game video games, Squirtle. Right. But also I've been trying to learn 3D animation. Oh. And so VG could also be video graphics. Oh, cool. So yeah, so I and I realized that for like name association and everything like having numbers attached to your name isn't always the best for branding okay um not that i'm trying to really build a personal brand at the moment but (laughs) kind of like future proofing yeah i'm setting myself up here better than than i had with with squirtle squad four seven with squad spelled without the u now i literally can just say vg squirtle and there's no interpretation there. I don't have to explain the spelling or anything. Yeah, that's okay. Now, now I, I got to go back to the drawing board maybe on this one because I might have to rebrand that because I like it. I like it. VG Squirtle. That's yeah. it's got a good ring to it too. Yeah. So that's I don't really tweet much. I tend to retweet a lot of things. I mm-hmm. I want to. I I would like to start 
tweeting more. I just don't often feel like I have anything to say. But you know what? Reading a lot of other people's tweets, they don't really have a lot of to say either. So true. Um, yeah, you can follow me there. Uh, so at VG Squirtle. I think everything else is still at Squirtle Squad Four Seven. Um, but eventually that will also get rebranded. Uh, eventually that will all be rebranded. So just do VG Squirtle at Twitter for now. And yeah. Okay. Look at all my, my Wii tweets. I retweet mainly Pokemon, Dungeons and Dragons, and Magic the Gathering. Nice. If you're interested in any or all of those things. And if anyone wants to follow me, I am at SpartanStrike07, both on Twitter and Instagram, as well as on the YouTube channel, even though on the YouTube channel it's just these podcast episodes for now, until I finally get some free time somewhere in my 30s, I would hope, <laughs> to, <laughs> to make some actual YouTube content. Um, yeah, Spart- like now I'm thinking like Spartan Strike Zero Seven. Like, man, I like really gotta change it up or something. But ah, okay, like now uh, you got me thinking. You got me thinking. Okay, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. So thank you everyone for listening. We appreciate your support, and we will look forward to next time talking about everything else coming up in the Pokemon world. Bye. Bye.